I'm not having a heart attack. It's not why I'm confused. Okay. There we go. <laughs> all right. Okay, so our, our topic today is, all right, we know the parts of the heart. How is it actually operating to move blood into your different circulations? And we call this cardiac cycle. There we go. Um, your quiz answers for today, I forgot to make them blue, but um, the answer to number one is electrocardiogram. Electrocardiogram. It's almost like this, but this is um, listening to the sound. This is looking at the electrical signal. SA stands for B, sinoatrial. Was that answer? And number three, these arrows were showing the electrical conduction pathways. Somebody must have like called me when I was doing this or something. <laughs> I don't have the answers listed like I usually do. But this yellow stuff and the white arrows are showing electrical waves. It's not blood flow. It's electrical activity. So um, our heart beats on its own, which is really useful. Um, and we take it for granted, like, yeah, heart beats on its own. Um, it does that by having its own electrical conduction system that we call intrinsic. So intrinsic means that it's, it's part of the heart and it doesn't rely on outside input from your brain to keep on pumping. It's intrinsic. And embedded in amongst your heart muscle cells, you've got some specialized ones that generate signals and send electrical signals to each other. The signals tell which part of the heart to beat at which time. So the way that this is set up is really cool and it allows atria to contract together and then ventricles and then atria again and then ventricles. So this, I really like, I really like OpenStax, um, how it's set up for heart stuff. It's very good. And it's showing you here, okay, here's, here's all the parts of the heart that we looked at yesterday. And now they're overlaying on it some yellow lines and some white lines. Everything in yellow is the electrical generating or the electrical conducting pathways. So whenever you see yellow on these pictures, those are cells that generate and also conduct the electrical signals. And each, each segment of this, it's got different names that we'll go through in a few minutes. Um, it, you can kind of think of it as like firing or beeping. It doesn't make a beep, but pulsing electrical signals, each part of it. And each individual part will have a rhythm or like a speed of the pulsing. We call that autorhythmic. Autorhythmic. And it has kind of a beginning. So the beginning of the electrical signaling is at this spot right here called sinoatrial node. Sino means left. Or sorry, sino means right. Sino means right. And so sinoatrial is a little spot that's in the right atrium that starts um, the pulsing of these electrical waves. And that's shown on this picture right here. This is sinoatrial node. So this would be a good place to, to draw in some labels. So from here, or actually just make an arrow that points to that word sinoatrial SA node is this. And see how I'm saying, okay, here's the beginning. There's nothing happening at the SA node, but then it creates a little electrical pulse and the pulse goes downward and kind of lateral. 
And then we see these two chambers turn purple. What are these chambers? What'd you say? Left, or yeah, left and right atria. These are the atria. So there was electrical signal that kind of moved through the atria. And we see that they turn purple. And the purple in this picture means that the, the uh, muscle has been activated. Kind of like if, if you do the wave in the stadium and like, like you see the person next to you doing it and you're like, oh, okay, and you sit back down. So this, this contraction signal and the contraction of the muscle are going to move in waves. And then we come to the next spot, which is this yellow spot right here. Draw a line over and call this one AV node. Capital A, capital V, and then the word node. That is the AV node or atrioventricular node. What'd you say? This one right here, can you see that? It's kind of between the atria and the ventricles, lower down. That's the AV node. And the AV node has now received the signal. And notice what they're showing here in the picture. So now the AV node has turned purple. And the purple has gone down the interventricular septum and gone down to the apex, like so. And then we see the ventricles themselves turn purple. So what's happening between here and here is that the signal spreads from AV node real quick down to the apex. Like, shoop. I can't control the cursor. Shoop. Very quick. And then the ventricles start getting the message to get activated, and they're activating from the apex upward. Like so. This picture is a good one to come back to after we talked about the details of what happened in every step here. So we're going to come back to this. So we're, we're starting off this signaling process at the SA node, sinoatrial node. And it's colored here in yellow. And we see some arrows coming out from it. These white arrows indicate that it's going to spread out. And the signal, as it moves from SA node down to AV, it's traveling slow. It's kind of traveling slowly. And what happens as it is traveling, I want you to write, um, I guess, write this back down here or somewhere on this side. So the signal is traveling slowly from the SA node downward. And the contraction of the atria follows the movement of that signal right behind it, right behind it. So it's kind of like as the signal is passing through, the atria will start contracting. And the signal makes its way down to AV node right here. <clears throat> this is atrioventricular node, AV, right there. And once the signal gets to the AV node, it's going to move quickly all the way down to the apex. It's like there, there's a highway for its movement. Once the signal gets here, it goes quickly down to the apex, and it's traveling through what we call the AV bundle. So under, under this side where it says AV node, signal travels quickly. 
It travels quickly down to the apex. Through the AV bundle. This can also be called the bundle of hiss, and that, that annoys me for some reason. So I'm going to call it AV bundle. There is an alternative term for it. Um, so it's going through interventricular septum down to here. And the important thing to, to understand about how this works is that this signal goes quick down to the bottom and it doesn't start activating muscle contraction until it gets to the apex. So it goes down to the apex through the AV bundle quickly and then activates ventricular contraction. And ventricular contraction doesn't start until the signal gets down here. So if you think of this like um, electrical wiring, which it sort of is like that, the signal is moving quickly down through here, and it, you can also think of it as having like insulation on it. So electricity moves through an insulated wire a little bit faster than an uninsulated wire because it's not leaking out. So you've got a highway here, 80 bundle, signal moves fast down here and it's kind of insulated. But once it gets down here and it starts spreading back up the walls, then it can activate muscle contraction. Mm -hmm. When it goes from the SA node to the AV node, is it going to the um, right side at the same time? This, I, I really like that question. So the question is, when it's moving from here to here, is it going to the right side at the same time? I mean, like, and it is. is this, yeah, there's a loop at the top that connects it. And this 2D picture is not really showing how deep in this is. So it's, it's actually more like over here in a 3D sense. It's more in the, sorry, this is more, both of these are more in the middle of the heart than this is making it look. So it is going to both sides basically equally. Yeah. I love that question also. It says ventricular. My lowercase r and v look the same. It's ventricular like this, atrioventricular. So what this means is that the atria are going to contract from top to bottom. The ventricles contract from bottom upward, which is cool. We need it to be that way. We need atria to push blood down into the ventricles. And then we need the ventricles to wait, like wait, okay, wait a minute. And then at the right time, the ventricles to contract from bottom up and then push blood up through the pulmonary trunk and up through the aorta. Whoop, go back. So this this picture, now we can kind of look at it with, with some more info about what's going on. Same picture, same colors. But this time, when we're looking at the purple wave, we see it's going from top to bottom of the atria. Then we got to like whoosh down the bottom here. And then the ventricles start contracting from the bottom up. This system is going to allow atria to contract push blood down and then dot 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 you've got a little waiting period <coughs> Then the ventricles contract and they push blood up. And then you get the next pulse coming out of the SA node. So every time this pulses, it's, it's basically pulsing to set your heartbeat. SA node is what's activating your heart to contract basically and it had better keep on doing that at a pretty standard rate to set your your heart contraction 
Um, your essay node will pulse from about 70-ish beats per minute. It's kind of like the, it's, it's usual speed, let's say, around 70. It's going to be different for different people. AV node will pulse at about 40-ish beats per minute. So if they're, if they're both working properly, the SA node is going to dominate at setting your heart. But if SA node is not functioning, your AV node can pulse on its own. It's super slow. Super slow. And there are people with heart damage that are operating on AV pulses. They need a pacemaker really quick. If you have, um, if you know somebody that gets a pacemaker, it's because their nodes are not working properly and they need like a tiny shock every second for the rest of their life to make their heart work. Which maybe that's upsetting, but it's kind of cool also that we have the ability to do that. Um, something else so cool is that the way that your heart fibers are arranged is also making the blood go in the correct direction and being very efficient about twisting blood from place to place. Um, so the myocardium, the walls of each chamber is arranged in a twist that helps it twist ring, like you know this word ring out a rag, like get it, get it all out, twists or rings blood downward for the atria and upward for the ventricles. So cool. Your heart is just so optimized to do what it does in every single way. It's got electrical control, it's got muscle twist arrangement, valves opening and closing at the right time. It's just great. It's great. Uh-huh. So then the like cycle between the SA node and the AV node, the SA node has to like it has to go through the AV node before the SA node contracts again or no? Um, if this is all working properly, by the time the SA node contracts again, all the other stuff has already happened. Is that answering what you're asking? So an SA node that is operating properly at about 70-ish beats a minute, that's the right rhythm to allow the space of time for all this other stuff to happen and then start over. Um, if the SA node is going too fast, like beep, 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 beep. And then your heart gets all out of whack and it's contracting willy nilly or like not not correctly and we call that fibrillation or AFib. We'll look at that in a few minutes. Great, great, great question asking today. Keep it up. So all, all the things that your heart does within the space of one heartbeat, we call that cardiac cycle. Cardiac cycle. And so cardiac cycle includes a lot of little individual events and they've got to be going in the right order and with the right timing. And we have we have some words that describe what the chambers do, which are systole. It looks like it should be systole, but it's systole and diastole. So if, if a chamber is contracting, and it is literally muscle contracting and squeezing blood right at that moment, we say that it is in systole. But if the chamber is in an in-between time and the muscle's relaxing, we call that diastole. And they're supposed to take turns. So you're supposed to have atria contract first while the ventricles are relaxing. And then you need the atria to relax while the ventricles are contracting. Um, make a note right here that these words, systole and diastole, this is what the chambers do. This is, this is a state of muscle. 
So like muscle can be contracting, be in systole. Muscle can be in diastole and be relaxing. To put what the chambers do? Yeah, this is about chambers. Um, valves don't contract and relax. Valves open and shut. So these, these words, ventricular, systole, and like atrial, diastole, they're talking about what the chambers are doing. These are muscle-related terms, systole, diastole. Um, what do you say? It depends on what time we're talking about. Like atria are going to be in systole sometimes. Ventricles are going to be in systole sometimes. Um, and these these words you need to have memorized what they mean. It's going to help you like multiple topics later in the semester and then later in your career. Okay. So this this picture is going to be a super helpful one to use to study how a cardiac cycle works and. For today, I don't want you to worry about this electrical tracing. We're going to learn about that in lab next week. We're going to measure our own heart activity and learn how, how all this relates to electrical readouts. But for right now, know that this these are the parts of cardiac cycle. And we, we know now all the parts in the electrical conduction that we need to know to understand how this works. And um, notice you have to pick some kind of place where we say that it starts. But you hope that this is just a continuous loop. It better be or you're, you're about to die if it's not just continuously cycling. But we're going to we're going to we got to pick somewhere to start describing it. So I'm going to go with your book and say that this is where we're going to consider it starting. And the next few slides are going to be kind of moving around. The cycle and I've cut it up in pieces. But together this is cardiac cycle. Um, so, so this is where we're going to start, so to speak. As we're going through this, do not worry about the words on the outside of the circle. So where it's saying ventricular diastole late and isovolumetric relaxation, that's more detail than we need for this class. But these parts around the inside of the ring where we're saying ventricles are in diastole, that is useful for this class. So we start with basically all four chambers relaxed. The atria are in diastole, they're not contracting, and the ventricles are also in diastole. And this is kind of the heart, like just for a second, it's, it's resting, all of it's resting. And as it's resting, blood is filling it up. So here comes the blood into the atria on both sides. And the heart's relaxed, and so the blood is going to kind of fill up the heart. We call that ventricular filling. And at this point, it's very important to notice that the semilunar valves here and here are closed. Those valves are closed. Or we see here that they're closed. But the AV valves are open and as the heart is filling up. And then the next thing that's going to happen is that the atria are going to start contracting. So that's next. And you see that they're, they're coloring this purple. What made them start contracting? Like what changed between here and here, why are they contracting now? How they know to do that?
it's almost magical, but not quite. So between here and here, you had a uh, SA node pulse. So if I were you, I would write that in. Go back to your big circle. Between here and here, you have a V S A. Get it right. S A. S A node activates. Right here. S A node activates. And when it does, it's going to send that slow electrical wave through the atria and they'll start contracting right behind it. And now they're contracting. So we say the atria are in systole. And they're contracting and they're pushing the blood down. Which means that that's going to keep those valves open and the blood starts moving more into the ventricles. atrial systole and you see they're they're showing that by this little inside circle designation atrial systole you said in the uh, SA nodes activate yeah the SA node activates like right before this happens and I think it would be good to write that here SA node activates because that's what makes this happen SA node activates. And the atria contract, and they're going to push blood down. So in between here and here, this is where AV node gets the signal and sends the signal. And we've got that fast signal all the way down to the apex of the ventricles. That's happening at this time point. And when that happens here, now the ventricles are going to contract from the bottom up. And when they do that, they're pushing backward on those AV valves and those valves shut. Those valves shut, AV valves shut. And then immediately right after that, the blood's getting pushed up. So the blood shuts those valves and it opens the SL valve. So we get blood pushing up into pulmonary trunk. We get blood pushing up into aorta. And all of this is happening as, as the ventricles contract. So ventricular systole. Whoosh, there goes the blood out of the heart. Ventricular systole. How's it seem? It's like it, it's weird to me that it takes you know, like half an hour to describe what your heart's doing in 0.8 seconds. But it's worth spending half an hour to understand how this works because it's keeping us alive. Um, so what I want to show right here ha has to do with how the valves work. And um, these these are gates that you use to make cows go one way. So if you have experienced this, I'm sorry, it's character building. Um, but this this is a cow gate. It could be for horses. I feel like cows need them more. They're dumber. So this gate would let the cows come from over here up toward you, but only in this direction. Let's just see. There we go. From here toward you, only in this direction. And then if the cows get over here on this side where I am right now, and they start getting panicky and they want to go back, well. They can't go back because the gate shuts in that direction. These are one way gates. So your heart is also set up for your heart valves to only open in one direction. And if you push on them from the other side, they're supposed to close in the other direction. So that means that blood can move from atria to ventricles only in one direction. And then when the ventricles then start squeezing on the blood after it comes there, can't go back through the AV valves. It can only go out through the SL valves because they're opening in the forward direction. Um, this up here says one way. So your heart valves are acting as one way gates to control this. 
Did I go in the right direction? Here? No. Okay. This is what we need next. So right after the ventricles are pushing blood that closed the AV valves and opened the SL valves, the blood goes on out and then the SL valves close. I think I just went the wrong way again. There we go. The SL valves shut. And now we're back to where we started. Here's here's the um, oh great last two, three minutes. We made it all the way around the cycle. So pleased. And this is a really good re lecture to have recorded because you can go back and listen to it again and like hear me say, did I just move the slide wrong again? Yes, I did. Um, but kind of go back through this stuff. So ventricles got done contracting. Now they're going to relax. All chambers are relaxed for a minute. We're back at the start. Um, one more thing to add on to this is heart sounds. Heart sounds. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. Kind of wish this thing would go away right here. Um, so it says in a heartbeat, there is the word love duck. This is how we, we describe what a heartbeat sounds like, like automatopoeia. Love duck, love duck, love duck, love duck, love duck. Stop now. Love duck. So the first sound is love, the second sound is duck. And lub, L U B, is the first sound. And it's the sound of the AV valves shutting, like slamming. Slam backwards, slam shut. That's lub. And the second sound is the SL valves slamming shut. That's the duck. So I would like for you to write on this circle or this cardiac cycle, where does the sound lub happen? Where does the sound duck happen? And this is where we're going to start on the Friday. saying today is Wednesday? I guess so. On Friday, we're going to start with this. So before then, right on here, where, where's love? Where's duck? Where does that occur during this cycle? And that's where we'll, we will start for Friday. Um, you also, for Friday, will, um, it's possible I might switch the order of what I've got in the schedule. We might talk about blood vessels first and then capillary stuff. But watch for those slides to go up on Canvas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.